Kangaroo care is the practice of skin-to-skin -skin contact between infant and parent. It was first introduced in Colombia as an alternative approach to NICU care, where resources are limited, overcrowding is common, and infection rates and mortality are high. As a result of kangaroo care, mortality rates declined and mother-infant attachment improved. In developing countries, kangaroo mother care is an important intervention to reduce morbidity and mortality and does so by up to 50%. But kangaroo care is also a proven benefit for infants under 2.5 kilograms birth weight with decreasing mortality, severity of illness, infections, length of stay, and improved mother-infant bonding, as well as breastfeeding rates and maternal satisfaction, even in higher income countries. Most skin-to-skin -skin contact lasts in the region of one to three hours with either parent. A typically stable baby, clad in a diaper and cap, is held prone closely against the parent's bare chest. And increasingly, infants under 26 weeks and even under 600 grams birth weight, even those on ventilation, are being considered, including those that are just newly born. Infants on ventilators, including high-frequency oscillation, even those who have chest strains or other tubes in situ, can be provided with kangaroo care quite safely. It is recommended, however, to consider avoiding kangaroo care in infants that are very premature, who require a great deal of humidity, maybe have abdominal wall defects, or those with neural tube defects, or indeed those newly post-operative patients, particularly those who have hemodynamic instability. And this patient population is one where a great deal more of attention needs to be uh, brought to bear before kangaroo care is considered safe. The benefits of kangaroo care for preterm infants are considerable. Both cardiorespiratory and temperature control are improved. There's an increase in sleep time, including quiet sleep. And by term, these babies have more periods of quiet sleep and alert wakefulness with more organized sleep-wake cycling and less active sleep suggesting more rapid improvement in state organization of the infant. They are indeed more alert and more responsive and less irritable or fussy. There have been two cohort studies that also, in show, that also have shown better neurodevelopmental outcomes for infants in the 25 to 35 week gestational age at birth. This is due to a standardized assessment showing their Bailey scores, both the motor and mental performance, at 6 and 12 months are clearly better when kangaroo care is provided to those infants. The benefits of, of the baby for the baby are considerable. The, baron, the benefits for the parents are considerable. And this slide uh, re-emphasizes how much parents become to rely on the kangaroo care to increase the parent-baby bonding developing more positive interactions with their baby, less parental anxiety and stress, generally better sleep for all, and increased confidence in caring for their baby and their readiness for discharge home. The benefit of mums being able to provide uh, breast uh, milk for their babies is also clearly um, understood. With regard to parent bonding, this indeed is not a new concept. The fact that kangaroo care seems to enhance uh, parent bonding, um, was first described back in 1971, where maternal infant bonding was first, um, first described and recognized to be an important period in that newborn's life, a sensitive period for both mother and indeed father to bond with their child. By 2007, there was a clear recognition of the biological and psychological continuum of care with emphasis indeed more on the environment, both in the NICU and at home after the newborn period. And by 2012, developmental care and family-centered care had become a state of um, most NICUs, influencing both parent bonding um, in the NICU and beyond. 
This is a typical example of what one will find on the inter internet if you look into parent bonding. The more the child feels attached to the mother, and indeed father, the more secure he or she is in accepting himself and the rest of the world. The more love he gets, the more he is capable of giving. Attachment is as central to the developing child as eating and breathing. And our job in the NICU environment is to make sure that that attachment between parent and infant is not interrupted. Hence the whole notion of family-centered care. Patient and family-centered care is an innovative approach to the planning, delivery, and evaluation of health care that is grounded in a mutually beneficial partnership among patients, families, and care providers that recognizes the importance of a family in the patient's or baby's life. It is grounded in collaboration among patients, families, physicians, nurses, and indeed other professionals in clinical care as well as for the planning, delivery, and evaluation of healthcare and the education of healthcare professionals and in research as well. Family centered care principles involve listening to and respecting each child and family, honoring racial, ethnic, cultural, and socioeconomic backgrounds, and patient and family experience and, and incorporating them into our daily practice ensuring flexibility in organizational policies, procedures, and provider practices so services can be tailored to the needs, the beliefs, and the cultural values of each baby, each child, and each family. It involves sharing complete, honest, and unbiased information with patients and their families on an ongoing basis so that they may effectively participate in care and decision-making to the level that they choose. Health information for children and families should be available in the range of cultural and linguistic diversity in our community and take into account health literacy. Indeed, in hospitals conducting physicians' rounds in the patient's room with nursing staff and the family present can enhance the exchange of information and encourage the involvement of the family in decision making. Parents of infants most sat are more satisfied with the care that they receive when family-centered care is part and parcel of the unit's practice. It's demonstrated to increase competence and confidence in infant caregiving, and we're more willing to seek help from care providers. Improvement in growth parameters and early discharge of very low birth weight babies is also demonstrated in family-centered care units. Care maps are designed for the NICU to promote family-centered care throughout daily activities with infants and their families to deliver the best care in a holistic manner to meet the developmental, physical, and psychosocial needs of the infants and their families. Here is an example of a mum participating in the NICU rounds and on the right hand side, we see a mum actually providing the report to, of her baby to the neonatologist on the left hand side. Typically done the other way around, but in this instance, family integrated care is being provided or care by parent model. This whole notion of family integrated care or care by model or care by parent has become a rather new wave in treatment and transition. In family-centered care, NICUs, which promote skin-to-skin, -skin, involve parents in decision-making and caregiving, and provide education and psychosocial support to parents. We also see rooming in, plus educational programs for the parents, training modules for the nurses. And while parents have access to peer support, such as parent-buddy programs, the parents then can provide complete care for their baby themselves. This improves the environment so that parents are able to spend eight to 12 hours a day in the NICU. And this begins at the time of the baby's admission. So parents participate in information sharing during rounds. And as parents' confidence grows, they become the primary caregivers for their baby, either continuously providing support to their infant or for substantial periods of time during the infant stay in the NICU.